back in just a couple of minutes. You know, there, there's a saying going around out there, and they say that uh, sometimes something that is in style doesn't necessarily mean it's in style for everybody at every age. That's right. There are so many body types out there, so many sizes. We've got New York icon and fashion expert, Sunel Remchandeni's here with us. And you're telling us today, thanks for being with us, how Thank to you. dress your shape, right? Yes. Um, it's really interesting. We've had a lot of discussion on body shape and how you should dress it. I'm very lucky being in New York where the trends are started, but here it's interesting to see things happen in reality. In New York, I'm very lucky to work with a lot of celebrities. And, the, and you look at them and say, wow, they look perfect. They have perfect bodies. They have perfect hair. But the truth is, it's far from perfect. Uh, so now, you work with a lot of people that we've heard of before, that we see every day. Yes. Uh, tell our viewers some of the people that, that, that you, you, know, that you consult with and work for every day. I've work been with lucky to work with people like Queen Latifah, Cameron Meinheim, Nikki Blonsky, among several others. Right, right. Now tell us, we, you brought some graphics with you, some full screen, so we can kind of go through a few of those today. Um, tell us what are some of the elements of dressing for your body. What would you start with? I think the most important thing is confidence. Own what you have. But in order to own what you have, you have to know what you have. And we see that bodies have changed over the years. Yes. What's been very interesting is in 1985, the most common body size in America was a size 8. Today, it is a size 14. The average wow. American woman is a size 14, weighs 147 pounds, and is 5'4". The media, unfortunately, has not kept up with this. And the images that we see in magazines and runways don't reflect this. And what are some ladies with great style? I would definitely say, you know, we always have the Audrey Hepburn. We hear Princess Diana, Grace Kelly, Jackie O. And uh, there are some new style icons like Gwyneth Paltrow, Gwen Stefani, that are not your traditional but, style icons. Right, and, but again, the reality is that uh, not all American women are the same size or the same stature uh, as these women. So, so, so you have to look at what you have realistically. You have how to like what you have exactly, and, and and go to it. Well, how do you help some of these women uh, uh, who are who identify are, your body? Right. So some of these modern normal women. How do you help them look good? The first thing I would say is dress the body that you have, not the body that you had in high school or in college and also not the body that you plan to have. Every one of us is like, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. I'm <laughs> going to look great. I've never said that. And no. we, we start dressing the body we don't have, and then everything's a little too tight and not correct. And that's when you start having the fashion don'ts. And what is great style? Great style is style that's timeless, style that's you know classic, style that really fits the person and allows the personality to come out. Tracy and I were talking about earlier body types. There's like the pear shape, the hourglass. Can you yes. kind of get, tell us what the body types are? Well, um, new research is showing because we've gotten slightly bigger as a nation, there are more different body types out there because there's more places for the weight to go. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know if that's good or not. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the most common body type in America is the pear, followed by the apple. We have the hourglass, the inverted triangle, the bear the barrel, and uh, the straight shape. Right. Now, what I would really recommend is, you know, taking a look, you know, wearing your sexiest underwear, standing in front of the mirror, and taking a look at your shape. And just remember, God created you in his own image, so you're beautiful. He doesn't decide what you put on every morning. You do. <laughs> so just taking a look and knowing what works and what doesn't work is really important. And now, there are some do's and don'ts up there. Now, all the body shapes don't apply, but some of these same, some of these basic ideas apply to men, right? I of mean, you, course. You, have to, you have to dress with what you got. Exactly. And, you got to work with what you got. Yeah, and you, and, yeah, and you have to realize who you are. Uh, what, 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 is your, what are your rules for average people about how much they should try to spend or where they should try to shop for, for some of these things? I would say, you know, really by knowing your body type, you can go out and get pieces that work for you. And look for pieces that are versatile, something that you can wear to work with a pair of black slacks and then throw it on on the weekend with a pair of jeans and still really maximize the places you can wear, wear your clothes. And as you've been talking, we've been showing all the different body types, the do's and don'ts, so viewers at home are able to read all the do's and don'ts for the different body types. And it's important, too, that you said, um, just because something's in style, for example, those 
those uh, bubble skirts that came in, you know, about six months ago. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't mean everybody's going to look good in a bubble skirt. You, Definitely. You know, we, we've we got the graphic up here, and, and, and here's an example of what Sunil has got going. If you have a straight body type, for example, uh, do get something that's got feminine details, do that's got something, get something, get a, get a, get a push up bra. But don't go masculine. Exactly. What say because what, what's going to happen is if you go towards masculine styles, then it's only going to emphasize the straightness of your body. And the most desirable shape, every man and woman interviewed said, if they said, what, if a woman said, what shape could you be? She said, hourglass. And when we asked men, what, sh what kind of women do you like? It immediately went hourglass. We like the girls with curves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we do. So we what, do. Yeah. what else can you tell us about um, <clears throat> dressing your body? I think uh, there are just some simple rules that you have to keep in mind. The first rule is, of course, maximize your assets. You'll be surprised how many women conceal the thing that's most beautiful about their body. Go ask your man, your husband, your, even your mother, hey, what's amazing about my body? Uh, let me do this, Sunil, because Sunil's going to be with us all week, and we want to invite you. If you want to ask Sunil some questions about his thoughts on, on how you can look your best and what you can do, Get in touch with us. You can write us, uh, email us at talk at abc3340.com, or you can just call and ask Sunil a question, 205-982-3944. And later in the week, Sunil has his models with him, yeah, right? Yeah, we're going to have yes. live models with us every day. And Friday, we're going to open up. For, so the questions that you send in, Sunil's going to answer them for you on Friday's show. So anything you want to know about your body. And, and real quick for us, there's a, a couple big tips you said about dressing your body. Yes. You already said one. What were the other ones? But the, definitely, I would say maximize your assets minimize your liabilities if there's something you feel is a liability find a way to hide it definitely create verticality stand tall posture is very important okay and uh, definitely what you want to do is make you look hourglass because you know that's what the men want so cinch in that waist and <laughs> tight you know, tighten those work girdles it. and work, work it, it. Yeah. <laughs> and definitely the simplest thing is it's all about balance you know if you're big on the bottom balance it out if you're big on top balance it out just try to get get closer to the hourglass, the ideal body that Marilyn Monroe had. Well, we're excited. We You're going to be with us for a five-day series, so we're excited to have you here. Yeah. Yeah. Sunil, thanks a lot. Thank you very we much. We appreciate it. Glad you. To Sunil Ramsandani, he's going to be with us this week. You get That's to communicate right. with him. All right, we've got lots more coming up uh, in the next segment of our program. As a matter of fact, coming up next, you get to see the next generation of Honda's sweet mid-sized SUV. The pilot is flying your way when we come back. Stick around. Hey there, welcome back. As we all know, it's a tight economy out there right now. And in some homes, there's barely enough extra money to fill the gas tank, let alone go on a shopping spree. But we are learning today, we've got our fashion expert, Sunel Remshandani, again with us today from New York on part two of, part two of his five-part day, five day series. Let's get that out this morning. We're talking about dressing in a recession. And Tracy, you and I were talking about, how do you do that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh uh, I, you know, well, I won't make any jokes about it. <laughs> about running out of cash, but 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 we do have to think about what it might be like if we've got a little bit less money, or or if we've got to spend the big money on some other things. Yeah. Sunil brought models with him, so we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit of a modeling show, and not only going to talk about it, but we get to see, right, Sunil? Yes, you get to see. It's definitely in a recession. What you look for is value and versatility. You want to find pieces that you can wear many different ways. You know, something that you can wear with jeans on a weekend or wear with a pair of black slacks to work. You also want pieces that are better made, that are timeless, seasonless fabric, so you can take them into the spring and summer. Uh, you know, I get the impression that you're saying spend as much as you can reasonably spend. In other words, don't buy cheap clothes, buy good clothes. Is that part exactly. of what you're saying? Exactly. Okay. Because cl uh, good clothes are going to look better and they're going to last longer, so the cost per wear is going to be less. I mean, if you can wear a pair of pants that's better made for a year or a year and a half, it ends up costing you less in the long run. Do we have, we have a model, uh, several models with us today. Yes. Let's take a look and see what so, we're talking about. Our first model is Carrie. Carrie is wearing a coat, and I definitely recommend wearing, buying more shapes that are classic and then last longer. And if you see Carrie's top, she has it tied up right now, and if she takes it down, if she unties the top, it's a whole different, different top. Oh, That's I right. see. That's okay, right. so she had so, the jacket over. You can take that yes. off. 
and she can definitely, and then she can also wrap the top around her in different ways. So that top can be worn in three different ways. So and, it's real and, value. And that coat is kind of a classic wool yes. uh, with the, you know, winter coat, coat with the buttons. Exactly. You know, it's a style you recognize. You know, let's, we've only got about three more minutes. Let's see if we can see some of these other models. Yes, other definitely. Well. We have Hannah over here and Hannah's got a white shirt. A white shirt is a great investment piece. You can, it's completely seasonless. And with it, she's got a vest. Now the vest is great because she can wear it with the shirt or without a shirt if she's going out in the evening. I like and vests. definitely invest in a pair of classic pants. The wide leg is really in for the fall. Yeah, I see and, that, the big cuffs. And with the big cuffs. And she could pair that with a black turtleneck and it would be a whole different outfit. Oh, okay. Next we have Angela. Angela is wearing the same coat Carrie was wearing, but she's wearing it to work and she's paired it with a very simple skirt which is a great investment piece and a cardigan. Now she can take this cardigan, throw it over a pair of jeans with a white shirt and it's a whole different look. So you and want I, pieces that you can mix and I know she's has, it's, it's kind of a stocking, like a fishnet almost, similar to a fishnet stocking on. Those are pretty classic, right? Those are pretty classic. Definitely invest in a pair of tights because that can help you wear some of your pieces from summer. You can take a short cut skirt from summer, put on a pair of tights and extend the wear. Sunil, I was in Macy's in uh, Atlanta a couple of weeks ago. Everywhere I saw were these big shirts with these big, loud, bold, colorful prints. I don't see any of that here. Why, why, why not? Because in a recession, you want pieces that you wear that are versatile. So if you wore that big, loud print shirt, everybody's going to notice and you can't wear it again. Again, what's our next model here doing? So this is Dari. Dari is a former Miss Alabama and she owns a clothing store. She's actually wearing a dress as a top. Oh, so okay. this short way, uh, it's, a, it's short, but she's pulled it up. So this way, if she needs to wear it during the week, she can wear it as a dress again with a pair of tights. And it's a very versatile, very, very valuable A, a lot of uh, nice, dark, neutral colors. Exactly. You can wear Stick these over and over again. Yeah, and to spice them up, like you said, with a pair of fancy shoes or a belt. Sometimes it's all in the detail, right? With Definitely. clothing and dressing it's in a recession. Accessories are very important because they can, you can take something that's classic and give it a little bit of oomph by adding an exciting accessory. Okay, got you. Wow. And nice. then, um, yeah, visual lesson there. Any, any, we got just a few seconds left. Anything else about dressing in a recession? We need to know as we look at these pretty models? Uh, definitely. We have Scott, who, who is um, a hair person, and he was able to do their hair in a way with just minimal effort and energy. It's important, hair and makeup are very important in a recession because you've got to look good, you've got to feel good, yeah. and you know, you, if you feel good, then you and do better. And if you don't have a ton right. of money for clothes, you can, you can fix your Definitely. hair and make your face look pretty yes. and get attention I, to that. I think this should be called how to make ourselves feel and look really great, <laughs> even though there's a recession. Yeah, you know all the men in the studio are like, woohoo, we love models, bring them back. Sinel, thanks very much. Yes, we and appreciate I, it. I want to thank all the models for spending sure. your time to be here. Ladies, thank you. Thanks thank a lot. You, and you. the hair is courtesy of Salon U, and the clothes are courtesy of Dari's in Soho. Fantastic. Thank we we you. take a break for just a second. We visit with the chef when we come back. You keep her there. We'll be right back. Hey there, welcome back. We are now on part three of our five day series on how to look fabulous. And all of us women, we want to look fabulous all the time, if we can. Absolutely. Here to help us do that, Sunil Ramshandani is back to talk about uh, sometimes the hard to fit body types. And he brought some models with him again today. Sunil, glad to have you back in. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Hard to fit body types. Uh, go ahead and give us the rundown. Yes, what it is is, um, you know, you see a lot of stuff about fall trends on TV, in magazines, and they're usually shown on runway models who are six foot and weigh 95 pounds soaking wet. And that's very, a lot of women are very frustrated and they feel so removed from that because their bodies don't look like anything they see. But what I would encourage them is to take inspiration from those pictures, but take fine pieces that work for their body. So uh, one of the biggest trends that we saw this fall was the statement coat. And we have Pam, um, we she's have our wearing, here today. wearing a statement coat. But as you can see, Pam is tall, uh, she's skinny, and she's got beautiful blonde hair. And what she's done is she's adap adopted the statement coat in a, in a very pretty color that suits her skin and the, 
the length is great and it's perfect. Yeah, and there she is again, and, and, and so yeah, our viewers I wanted can, to see her to I wanted can, to see her and come back, and she went yeah. so fast. Yes. I wanted to see her again. You know, you, you, you mentioned that the, the coat uh, complimenting her hair, complimenting yes. her skin tone, and, and she's wearing a lot of the same colors, and that's something you talked about previously yes. too, right? That definitely, be wearing, you know, colors that are in the same tone, lengthen your body, it's very harmonious, it presents a very polished look. And she also had the wide leg pant, which was a trend for the fall, but again, it was in proportion to her height. Okay, so she would be a, a tall, what you'd consider a tall. She would a be tall. a tall, definitely. Okay, gotcha. And the next, petite, right, is a kind of a hard to fit. Yeah, petite is also um, hard to fit. And here we have uh, Megan, who would be considered petite, but considering that the average American woman is 5'4", and petite's 5'3", it's, I don't know if it's a valid definition. But if you look at Megan, she's doing some of the big trends for the season, which is the wide leg pant. And again, it's very much in proportion to her frame. And another big trend that we see of the season is a sweater um, jacket or the sweater coat, which is perfect for Alabama because you don't get that cold here. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's a cocoon shape, but again, it's, it's very much in proportion to her. And the, she's, Wearing the clothes, you turn as around opposed. So we can see from the, the behind. Oh, it's so comfy looking. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, so, so that's back. easy to keep on in, indoors or take off, depending on, on how, how the temperatures yeah. change. And that's then very nice. um, the plum color that she's wearing is uh, one of the big colors of the season. And if you notice in the top, she's just showing a little bit of skin. And that keeps with the sexy, romantic mood that we're going, but it's still very appropriate and um, the, you know, just the right amount. Okay, what about the curvy figure? The curvy figure, we are very happy to have uh, Susie here. Susie is, um, owns an art gallery. And if you look at it, she's doing the statement coat, which is a big trend for the season. But she's kept a very classic peacoat shape that f just skims over a curve. So you can see her beautiful body underneath. And uh, she's chosen to also wear the snake print, which is a very big trend. And with the snake print, she's chosen very, uh, you know, traditional colors. So if you're doing a trendy print, go with safe colors. Don't do a trendy print in trendy colors. You said this is a this is the statement coat. Kind of define the statement coat again. The me. statement coat is the kind of coat that when you walk into the room it has the impact and everybody looks at you. Okay, so this is gotcha. a really nice coat. <laughs> yes. And yesterday you said don't skimp yes. uh, in, in terms of buying it. Don't go overly expensive, but, but don't get a, uh, a cheap yeah. coat or, or an inexpensive coat. Definitely. Get something nice, right? Yeah, and so now I wanted to tell you, I took your advice. I had this in my drawer. My, you know, everybody was making fun of my necklace this morning. She's just going to have it laying around. I'm going to wait until Sanel comes in this morning and ask him what he thinks. And the you're saying the chunky jewelry is Definitely. a nice accent, too, with whatever you're with wearing. With everything. Yeah, and this is really a, pretty, yeah. you're wearing a statement necklace, which is a big trend. The f interesting thing about the statement necklace is it must be fake. If you wear a statement necklace that's real, then it's not really a statement necklace. I got you. What else do you want to say about fitting, fitting the bodies that are harder to fit? I think you, uh, you have to understand your body, know your body, and they'll go with proportions that complement it. You have one more model. Yes, I do. We have Jeannie. And Jeannie is wearing the big voluminous sweater, which is a big trend. And you know, we did, Jeannie is, has a smaller frame, so she doesn't want to wear something that will overwhelm her and look like she's wearing her father's sweater or her husband's sweater. So we've paired, she's paired it with a slim jean. She's again kept it very monochromatic, all in black. And then if you notice on the sweater, she's just showing, the sweater's a little sheer, it's showing a little bit of skin. So still you can see the shape of her body through it. And it's not just a big tent all over. I got you. you know, in, in the stores, there are a lot of loud colors, and there are a lot of very tight clothes for the young ladies. If I guess if you're 12 or 13, that's okay. But exactly. if, if you're a grown up, you, you, you want to go out and get the right things. Uh, my advice would be to you, if you're doing a trendy color, then do it in a classic piece. If you're doing a trendy shape, do it in a classic color okay. so it's not overwhelming. And it's important to mention, we got two quick things to get in here. First, we want to thank all the stylists and the makeup artists that made these models look beautiful today. From Salon U, we've got Lisa Duncan, Alicia Jones, and Jason Roberts, stylists and makeup artists at Salon U. And all these clothes were hand-designed by you. Yes. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And also, 
We need your questions at home. Tracy and I said we need you to email in at talkofalabama.com. Sunel's going to be here with us Friday, and he's going to answer all your questions. So if you've got questions about your body, your body type, uh, clothes you should wear, clothes you should avoid, whatever they are to do with body or fashion, he's the expert. He's our fashion icon, and he's all the way in from New York City to, to be here with us. And Friday's our last day with them, so we want to... You, we want you to email questions and he can Terrific. answer them. Terrific. Sunil, thanks very much. We appreciate Thank it. You. We appreciate the models, too. They look we'll take a break. Yeah, they look fantastic. We're going to take a break. We'll leave you with them and we'll be right back. Stick around. Hey there, welcome back. We're here with Sunil, fashion icon and expert, designer to the stars. Thanks for being back with us. Thank you. You've Glad been with be us back. all week. We've had questions. We don't have time for all of them, but one of the questions, a woman emailed in. She said she's got an hourglass body type. Her cup size is a 38 triple D. Uh, she has a wonderfully round, plump bottom. The problem is, she says, she can't seem to fix when she buys large tops enough to fit across the chest. I usually look frumpy and fat. Um, how, how do you fix that? How do you address that? I would definitely say, first of all, you're extremely lucky. You have the most desirable body shape in America. What you want to do is you want to find tops that fit you well in the bust and then take them to a good tailor who will take them in in the waist and really emphasize the waist. And with your jeans, what you want to do is the same thing. Make sure that your jeans fit you in the, in the, um, in the rear mm -hmm. and then take it to a good tailor and have them take the waist in. And you know, uh, very often there are people in your family who sew or if you can't afford a good tailor, you can trade services with a good friend who sews. Next question. A woman had a baby about a year ago. She emailed in. She says she has a little, a little pouch, but she doesn't know how to hide it. I would definitely say two things. Look for tops that have, have a slight flare in the bottom. Okay. You want to stay away from the umpire waist because that's what you wore during your pregnancy. And definitely look for pants that have a higher waist and that way, between the two of them, they will give you a little control okay. and support in that zone. We had so many more questions. We couldn't fit them all in, but you can email Sunel, Sunel R, right? Yes, Sunel at SunelR.com, and okay. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks to Salon U as well. We'll be right back. Hey there, welcome back. We are joined by Sunel Remshandani, New York's hottest fashion designer and icon. Thanks for being with us here today. Thank you. I'm glad and to be here. What are we here. talking about? We are talking about during the holidays, it's a very stressful time. People want to look their best and your funds are stretched because you're buying gifts, you have to, you know, provide, entertain, etc. So one of the great ways you can look fantastic for the holidays is pull out your favorite black pants or your favorite black skirt and just go out there and get some trendy, really cute tops and kind of wear them and be fresh at every holiday gathering you're at. Let's show our first model up here. And, and uh, what, our first model got. here is Jenny. And one of the big trends we see for holiday are these ruffled, very feminine tops. And definitely they add a little holiday spirit without having, you know, um, beaded Santa Clauses <laughs> on your top. No red and green. Huh? <laughs> no red and green. Keep it black. Keep it simple. You know, this way you can extend the wear. You can throw a jacket over it and maybe wear it to a company Christmas party and kind of really multi-function your, your holiday tops. Okay. Let's our get next, our second model. Our next model is Robin. And Robin is wearing a black lace top. Lace is a big trend for holidays. It's, an, it's a trend that's much more important than print or color. Um, so she's got this fantastic lace top that's a little bit sexy, but still very tasteful. And this would be great for, say, a New Year's Eve event or, you know, something that's a little bit more late night. You said texture is more important than color. Why, why, mm. is that, uh, why is that the case? I think that's a direction we're heading in fashion and also being a recession. People like to wear simple colors that can multitask, but then again, you don't want to wear just basic black all the time, so putting a texture gives it a little lift. You dress it up just a little Dress bit. it up yeah. a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and it does look really nice. Yes. Too. Let's get our third model out yes. there. Yes, next we have um, Allison, and with Allison, you know, everybody goes towards red during the holidays, but there are also beautiful gel the dwell tones like sapphire blues, amethyst purples, emerald greens that work as well in conveying the holiday holiday spirit. I like that purple. 
Oh yeah, it does look what good. It looks it looks very nice with the black, and it works with the black, and that's that's one of the the keys too, right? You've got these really nice solid colors that work really well with black. Black, yes. Yeah. And you You're, can set yourself aside because when you go to the holiday party, everybody will be wearing the red Santas except. Oh yeah, and you'll be looking good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then finally, if you're someone who loves print. I would definitely recommend going towards animal prints for the holidays for a little. Dolce and Gabbana, Roberto Cavalli, they all show these amazing animal prints. And that's a good way to have some fun, add some texture. And this trend is continuing into the spring, so you can really extend uh, the wear. And you oh, definitely yeah. want to look for anything that's big right now is like leopard and snake. Those are the two biggest animal right. prints. That's sexy. Right, and these still stay within that classic line. And uh, uh, you're still keeping the cost fairly fairly reasonable too, yes, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So so if I'm, if I'm going out and I want to buy one of these blouses, dress up my black pants or my black skirt, what can I spend and, and come out knowing I'm looking pretty good? I mean, if you really want to splurge on something special for New Year's Eve, then you know you could end up spending $150 to $175. But at the same time, if it's just you know to get you through the holidays, you can find great tops between $25 to $40. And right. you know some of those consignment shops and vintage stores, you can find great things That's in right. that of people that have Definitely. too much money and they get rid of their clothes quick. That's right. Really nice clothes at really, really good prices. prices. So now we're always glad to have you in. Thank you Thank so much, you. and we will be right back. Stay with us. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Sunil Ramshandani is back with us again, and he's got some terrific fashion tips for us, especially during this time. <laughs> Sunil, one thing we just talked about, shopping in your closet. Explain that. Yes, what it is is, you know, Many of us have things in our closet that we've forgot, forgotten about, that we've pushed in the back. And what you can do, a very inexpensive way to have some new items, is go into your closet, find those pieces that have kind of got pushed into the back, bring them out front and say, hey, what can I do to make these new? Now, a lot of us are very artsy crafty. One thing you can do is you can look at, say, a jacket, and you can say, you know what? That has some really old-looking buttons. If I go out and get some beautiful jewel buttons and just switch them out, I have a great holiday jacket. Nice. Very often, your coat will have a fabric belt. You can pull out the fabric belt, take one of your leather belts, and put it on there, and it'll be a whole different coat. You can go out and find some little cheap accessories and pins. Maybe they're a dollar each. One of my friends did this. She found these beautiful little brooches. She bought 20 of them, and she pinned them all on her collar and her cuff, and it looked like a $500 jacket. You know, I, I, even, I even went to uh, Hancock Fabrics one day with my mom and my wife, and, but you know what I noticed? They had all kinds of buttons and all mm -hmm. kinds of little decorative things that you could take out of there. I mean, you could even go somewhere simple like that, right? Yes, you can go to a craft store and find some beautiful things and just attach them to your clothing. And you could probably alter, like say you've got a long skirt, you could probably cut it off, or you've got a jacket or a shirt, you could alter things Definitely. to make them more if style. You're, if you have minimal skills with a sewing machine or a needle and thread, yeah. you can take a long jacket and make it into a short crop jacket, which is very trendy right now. You can take a long skirt, make it short, and then wear it with a pair of bright colored tights. Another very easy alteration you can do is you can go to a thrift store, find some beautiful lace, and attach it to your collar and your cuffs, and you have the ruffle trend, which is a big trend for holidays. And what else? we got about a minute left. Yes, we can definitely. The next thing I would say is shop vintage. Go. A lot of designers are inspired by vintage clothing, especially right now, 1920s statement mm -hmm. necklaces are big. Love them. Feathered handbags. Then 1930s dresses are really big, and any coats from the 1950s. You can shop on eBay or go to your local thrift store, your vintage. But remember to have the pieces cleaned and spend a little money to have them altered to fit you because bodies have changed from the 20s and 30s to the to our parents. So essentially, you're going to save a lot of money, uh, even at the very first step, just by going in your closet, taking some things out, revamping exactly. and refreshing them. And then the last idea I have is for a fun holiday event, invite 
six of your friends who are close to you in size, have them bring six pieces from their closet that's in great shape, and you set up a little retail area in your living room. Oh, you swap clothes. Yes. Yeah. I love that yeah. idea. But make, yeah. sure, clothes. make sure you have a couple of drinks first so there's no <laughs> inhibitions about reaching out and grabbing something. And the fun thing is if two people want the same thing, you can have a little runway competition. Whoever works it best gets to keep it. And just it. hope your friends are the same size as you. Well, you kind yeah. of... You know, I don't, I don't know if you're going to have it. All of her friends are skinny. <laughs> Very skinny ladies. <laughs> some people have lost weight, some people have gained weight, and it's a great fun way. And you walk out with six things that you didn't have before, and more room in your class. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right. Tracy and I so always now, enjoy it. And we're always glad to have you. Thank <laughs> you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Great. So next. Hey there and welcome back. We are joined again with Sanel Ramshandani, our fashion expert, flew in from New York City to help us look beautiful for the holidays. We're talking about disguising that holiday weight that we all put on a few extra pounds around the holidays. We go to parties and we eat. Yes, yes. the new statistics are showing that the average American gains between five to seven pounds during the holidays. And this doesn't matter if you're a size two or a size